In this video, I'm going to have a look at downloading a Windows 11 installation ISO and creating installation media on Ubuntu 24.04 long-term support for a Dell XPS 8960. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the Windows 11 software download page. So I'll not be able to use the installation assistant or the media creation tool because these are Windows applications that cannot be run on Linux. So I need to select the direct ISO download links. I need to select the language, English International is English UK. And then I need to select the 64 bit download. So the installation ISO is a large file and we want to make sure that we've got a complete download. So what we can do is we can open up the terminal and we can type in SHA256 sum and then we can drag the ISO into the terminal to get the, the path of the ISO. So this gives us the checksum and we can check to see if it matches that listed on the software download page. And in this case it does, so we know that the installation ISO has been correctly downloaded. So I'm going to need to manually create a USB flash drive and in order to do so, I'm going to use Gparted. So now I'm going to insert a 32 gigabyte USB flash drive and I'm going to launch Gparted. Because this needs root access, I'm going to need to authenticate it. Next, I'm going to select the USB flash drive from the drop-down list and I'm going to right click any partition on it and select Unmount. And then I'm going to select device, create partition table and create a GPT partition table. Next, I'm going to create a new partition. So I need a small FAT32 partition to show up on some Dell systems as a boot device. So I'm going to make this 1024 megabytes and the partition name is going to be boot and the label is also going to be boot. So let me just add this partition and then I'm going to right click the remaining unallocated space and select new partition create an NTFS partition and call this install and this is going to occupy the remaining space on the USB flash drive. So then I can select apply and then apply and then Gparted will say the operation is complete so we can go ahead and close it. So we've got the two partitions of the USB flash drive boot and install. So let's go to our downloads folder and open it up in a new tab. So I want to right click this ISO and select open with disk image mounter. So this is going to display as another drive. So let me just access it. And what I want to do is copy everything from it apart from the sources folder to boot. And in place of the sources folder, we're going to create our own sources folder. And if we go back into the installation ISO, into the sources folder, we want to copy this boot.wim file. So once this is copied over, the boot partition is ready. Now we want essentially to copy everything from the installation ISO across to the install partition. So the reason we need the two partitions is because the install.wim on the installation ISO exceeds 4.0 gigabytes, which is upper limit for the FAT32 file system. And some Dell computers need a FAT32 partition in order to list a device as bootable. Next, I'm going to go to Dell Drivers and Downloads. And I'm going to select Browse All Products, select Computers, Desktops and All-in-Ones, XPS, XPS Tower, and it's an 8960. 
So I want to change the categories to storage and I want to download this Intel Rapid Storage Technology driver. I also want to download the network driver for the wireless card. So the Dell update package is essentially a Windows application. However, when you open it up, you get the option to extract it or install it. On Linux, we can't launch the Windows applications, but we can install Portable 7-zip and we can go ahead and launch this and use it to extract the driver. So if we maximize the Portable 7-zip, it opens in our user profile so we can navigate to documents, select the Intel Rapid Storage Technology driver and extract it to downloads in the extract subfolder. So if we navigate through this folder, we are eventually going to see a drivers folder. And we're interested in particular in the VMD driver. And this is known as the F6 driver. So let me just rename this folder F6 drivers. So now I'm going to download the network driver. And once again, I'm going to need this in the extracted format. So if I open up P7zip, let me just go up a level and then back to downloads. Let me select the Intel wireless driver and extract it to this subfolder extract to navigate through it until I get to drivers. And I want to copy this over to the install partition and let me just call it network drivers. So now the um, Windows 11 24H2 bootable USB is ready. So let me just power off the system and now I'm going to power it up and press F2 to get to the BIOS setup. So I'm going to change the storage controller operation mode and I'm going to change it from AHCI slash NVMe where each drive acts independently to RAID ON and this requires an Intel volume management driver. Next I'm going to go into maintenance and select data wipe and I'm going to securely wipe all internal drives in this XPS 8960. In this case, it's just the NVMe solid state drive. Next in security, I can see secure boot is on. And I can also see that I've got a TPM enabled. If I go into the boot menu, I'm just going to delete the old boot options. So now I can exit the Dell UFI BIOS setup and save the changes and power up the Dell pressing F12 to get to the Dell UFI BIOS boot menu. So here I should see the FAT32 partition on the USB flash drive. So I can go ahead and select that. So that's going to boot here and next will be taken into the Windows setup. So I want to select install Windows 11 and at this stage the product key will automatically be input from the Dell UFI BIOS taking me to the license agreement screen. If I select next it's going to search for disks. Notice here that I've only got disk 0 which is actually the USB flash drive. I need to select load driver and then select browse. Select the install partition and then I want to select this F6 drivers folder and here I want to select the VMD folder and then I want to select the top driver and now it should load this driver and display disk 1 which is going to be unallocated space so we can just select this and then select install Windows 11. 
So the next stages of the setup are automated and your computer will reboot, taking you to the out of the box experience setup. So here, select your, your region and your keyboard layout. On the next screen, you're going to be prompted to install a driver for the network if it's not detected. So what we want to do is navigate to the folder where we have the driver and then we can go ahead and connect to the wireless network. So once you're connected to the internet, select next and it's going to check for updates. Now input a computer name and unfortunately as we're connected to the internet we're going to be strong armed into a Microsoft account. So notice that the only option here is essentially sign in. There are some accessibility options here um, but we can't select to sign in with a local account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift and F10 to open up the command prompt. So notice when the command prompt is open that if I go into the accessibility settings I now get the full settings and I can actually select network and internet and here I can just go ahead and turn off the Wi-Fi. So if I press Shift and F10 to get the command prompt again, what I'm going to type in is OOBE out of the box experience slash bypass NRO. So this is going to bypass the network requirements, allowing for an offline account. So once again, I'm going to be asked for the region and the keyboard layout. Now I can select I don't have internet and this allows me to sign in with a local account. So I can just select the options for the privacy settings. And now I'll be taken to the Windows 11 desktop. So now I'm going to go into settings and go into network and internet and turn the Wi-Fi back on. So this connects to the internet and I can select Windows Update and search for updates. So a large number of updates are found and I can go ahead and restart the computer once all the updates are downloaded. Okay, so Windows is now up to date. I can right click the start button and select device manager. And then I can just go to Dell drivers and downloads and select the prompt to install support assist. And then it should detect uh, that the model is an XPS 8960. And I can select uh, check for updates and then download and install. So in this case I had three driver updates and I'm told I need to restart the computer in order to finish installing them. So one of the updates was a BIOS update and the computer will reboot and update the BIOS. So next I want to just open up the Microsoft Store and then select Library. And here I want to just select get updates. So this will essentially update all of the Windows apps to the latest versions. So Windows 10 24H2 should pre-install apps that are moderately up to date. However, the latest versions will have some additional fixes that you're going to want to install. 